your family re situation. Yeah. Yeah. He it did does. do that, as a matter of fact. Yeah, sometimes. You know, for sometimes. years. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. they were and going into these things. And it's just been, you know, the last few months that I really felt that I needed to have that intense time um, to go into it. You know, I just, I felt ready. Mm -hmm. I felt ready to totally devote myself. You know, I think up until then, it had been, it ju I just wasn't ready. And, um, and I, you know, I, it's taken me quite a long time. I mean, it's taken me uh, the past four months to really come to some understanding of what this really means. Because at times, it did feel like separating from my family. And at times, it did feel like leaving them behind. And at times, it did feel like, you know, um, uh, not being, well, I don't even know how to describe it. I, you know, but, but it really is a matter for me of coming, coming to clarity in my own mind of what's really going on. And that's where the peace is. And that's where the joy about it is when I'm with them now is, is to be clear in my own mind that it's not about leaving anyone behind. You know, again, it, I, I hear what you're saying about uh, all the people saying things to you because I've had the same experience and I'm sure there's a lot of parallels because I've, I've talked to so many people along the way, friends, family, neighbors, you name it, who said, what in the hell is going on and what are you doing? And so I've had to go into it so many different with so di many different people in so many different ways because everybody's kind of coming at it from a different perspective. Um, and, and yet, in a lot of ways, it's, it's almost indescribable for me to, you know, I mean, it's, again, I, when I hear myself talking about it, it all is just symbols because it's, it, again, it's the experience of it. And it's like it may look like one thing on the outside, but until until I have the experience of it, there's just it's just words, you know. But what I was hearing David say though was that that you couldn't be in a family setting no. and still do this, you know, have this experience of enlightenment. Of yeah, and that's. That was what you were saying. Yeah. And Jesus so would, would that mean that Rhonda would never go back or could never go but, back to that situation if if that was, was a choice? Or is but that when something you say go you, back, mm -hmm. to me what that means is I will never go back to being who I was, who I thought yeah. I was. With the same perception. As a mother, right. as a wife, as a family member in that way. Uh, without the attachments, without the specialness, I won't go back to that. I can't. Mm -hmm. She won't go back but, in her mind to how it's seen that. Right. Or, right. No but way. whether the body, I, I mean, is where the body happens to be, it, it, it sounded it, like, you, like, like you couldn't be the president of a company no. that, that you have to step apart from roles mm -hmm. and be totally neutral. So you could not work. And, and reach enlightenment. Is that right. It would be that enlightenment would be defined as as letting go of all separate concepts of self and accepting first of all one concept, which Jesus calls forgiveness, which is just seeing the the feathers as feathers, seeing the false as false, and and that that precedes the awakening or what one may call enlightenment. And yeah, that's you can see that there are definite implications of this as we go in. And it's good to, to really talk about those and get clear because, again, you know, people have tried to go round and round in circles. The ego's version is keep, keep one foot planted pretty good over here in the world <laughs> and have peace and joy and happiness. And then you end up feeling like the split after a while because the farther you go into it, you see that, that the ways of the world and the ways of the Spirit, as Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, <laughs> that he's guiding us, he's literally calling us out of the world 
calling it too right-mindedness. And, yeah, that's, that's the implication of where it's going. There's no dancing around it. Yeah. There's, There's dancing, though. There's dancing, <laughs> but not, <laughs> not like that. Not but, like that. And, and I think that, that can feel real scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, whoa, where's this yeah. going? You know? And how in the world, like, like everything would dissolve then. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> 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 what is that? She says it. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm still confused. Are you saying... Because we're talking about Rhonda, I hate to pick on you. No, but, but are you all. saying then that she cannot return home yeah. if she wants enlightenment? Well, it depends on how you're talking about home. <laughs> we're back right. where we're going. Like turning home. <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking yeah. about because I'm not as far progressed as yeah. any of the rest of yeah. us. Yeah. As a matter of fact, in that kind of level that you're talking about, we're all going home. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've been visiting that home in body for the last four and a half years. Mm-hmm. And and some of those bodies mm-hmm. that have been in that sure. home have been visiting this body that is being mm-hmm. in Cincinnati and even recently down in Kentucky. And again, um, it's that thing of, of it's very inclusive. In other words, when the call, when you answer the call, you, you symbolically, you reach your arms out mm-hmm. to everyone mm-hmm. and around you. You see. Come, 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 join me. Because they're all your family. Yes, and on the surface, it may seem there are many reactions like you're nuts <laughs> to whatever. But again, the invitation is there to everyone and to what would seem to be Rhonda's husband, mm-hmm. to Rhonda's son, to Rhonda's daughter. As I've gone up and just shared the ideas, and they've questioned me, and we've gone into things that I have extended that invitation, so to speak, and by questioning and answering and going into things with me, the children, and and to some degree Tom, and more and more Tom is opening up to the ideas, so in a sense, we are going back, (laughs) and that that invitation is being extended there as it is being extended everywhere we go. I think an an important distinction, and something that you have reminded Rhonda of, again and again as, as this body was going back to Traverse City is that you no longer go back to Traverse City as mom or as wife or as neighbor or as daughter-in-law or any of those things because that's not who you are. And Traverse City is not home. Right. right. And you go back as a teacher of God and still a teacher of God is a metaphor. Yes. Because, you know, but it's but, it's, but very, it's a very, very helpful, helpful metaphor, mm-hmm. and it's it's been totally transformative, mm-hmm. totally. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I have a totally different relationship with every one of those people, and it is beyond anything I ever imagined. And and we are going to Traverse City at the invitation of Tom, who who wants us to come so that he can go into these ideas at greater depth. Because he's finding them more and more attractive as he sees the changes in me. Right. So we're not going to Traverse City because there's someone there named Tom who has been called husband in the past. That has nothing to do with what, why we're going to Traverse City. Or even in the sense the invitation could be, seems like it's coming from Tom, yeah. but it's, it's really, really an internal for sure. direction and guidance. You know, as we come yeah. together and you go into the silence, and you just ask, you know, what what is most helpful. You you do it. You go through it moment by moment, day by day. We don't. It's not like you have itineraries and plans yeah. that seem to go very far into the future at all. Because it's really staying tuned in with the Holy Spirit and asking again, how can I be most helpful? Well, let me ask this: for people who study the course, then is the uh, goal? The idea behind that is that you should accept the call at some point and become a teacher, or is it just fine to study the course and live the life without devoting yourself to it as you have chosen to do? Or are you missing something? Well, if you look at the way the course is even written, when you get back to the teacher's manual we were talking about, it's written as a training manual for teachers of God, and he actually talks about being called 
They come from many backgrounds. They come from all religions, he says. They come from no religions. They don't look alike. They don't come from the same backgrounds. But once they've answered the call, once they've seen that there's no separate interest in their brother, then they have become a teacher of God. And literally, it's written for, for their pupils. You know, it's written in, in the sense of, of becoming a teacher of God, and it's more in the line of being like an apostle or, or the mystics and the saints. Now, again, for yourself, where you perceive yourself and where you believe you are, you work with the Holy Spirit's curriculum. It's highly individualized, and, and it's not even about trying to project, like, oh my gosh, if I work with this, am I going to end up like that or whatever? But it's just saying, Holy Spirit, here's where I am right now. This is what I perceive. This is the world I perceive. Help me to move in that direction. You know, you could see where, if you got into all the expectations of where this will take me and so on and so forth, it could seem overwhelming, and that would not be helpful. And admittedly, what you're hearing here is, is quite a, a deep, deep conversation. And for yourself, if the ego starts to come in with, like, oh, boy. Yeah, but look what's coming in is fear as well. Yeah, just... Don't you that's coming in? What's, what's the reaction coming in? Yeah. When it's be awe that these people, you know, can do, take these steps in their lives. So. Yeah. Not awe. Well, yeah. <laughs> because it's not all implies that there's, there's somebody above. There's somebody above. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. all equal. Yeah. yeah. David? That section, our change is required in the life situation of God's teachers. It was real helpful to me. I don't know. That's in the manual. The teacher's manual that you're so drawn to. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Or I, I saw this section, I didn't read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was mentioned Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is that helpful? Is well, that you answered the question. I, I, what are the other questions? I have a sense that mm-hmm. maybe there's even more questions. No, than that, was the, question. that was the question of the moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. How does that feel to you? I'm, it's clarification I'm seeking. It's clarification and understanding mm-hmm. of what this is all about in order to put it in perspective. Mm-hmm. So it feels neither hot nor cold. Mm-hmm. It's just there. Mm-hmm. I certainly sense, you know, a lot of spirit thoughts coming, you know, when I take this further and further and further. Now I know I'm probably pushing it too far. I just need to bring it back and deal with it right here. And I, I think that's part of the get caught up in this future thing. Mm-hmm. Well, what about, what, but, but, but what about, what about, you know? Mm-hmm. No, wait, let's just deal with it right now, okay? Yeah. Let's stay right here. This is okay. This is a good space to be in. Yeah, I think it may be because the uh, past and future thoughts will take away the peace. Yeah. Except that I was reading something in the course today or in one of the papers about, or maybe it was the fish. God, I'm reading so much. I don't know. But something about their useful past thoughts. And I think it just meant those lessons. I'm not sure you know, what it was. But generally, for me, any thought of the past or the future, in this world's terms, putting it into a world-like picture of the past or future, take away the peace. Yeah, a reference to what you're talking about would be where, where Jesus talks about keeping the past in a purified form, which can, can seem like oxymoron. <laughs> He's saying, let go of the past, and the past is gone now. Now you want to save the past in purified form, what's this about? But that's a metaphor for what I was describing when Linda was asking about the body's eyes still report differences, but the healed mind has put them all into one category. They are unreal. You see, there's still a perceptual component. The body's eyes still seeing differences. That's the past. That's definitely the past. That's not the holy instance. But it's that metaphor of, of, that's a purified form of the past. If you can see the past as flying feathers that that aren't being ordered and judged and, and they're equally unreal, that that would be a good example of a useful mm-hmm. use of the past or purified form of the past. Becca, what you said I think is so helpful that to keep projecting out ahead of where this is taking me can be very scary. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if I had seen a video of how it looks now three years ago, I might have been terrified. Mm -hmm. Because...